Hi, I'm Steve Chu. I'm here to answer your questions and let's have a great time. Well, literally sustainability means you can use the resources of the earth and what we inherited as something that could be used over and over again for uh, many, many generations to come. And so this is really the issue of sustainability. It's not for us to use it all up and leave very, very little for our children and our grandchildren. Well, there are many challenges to sustainability. The first is that we're getting more and more people. We're a world of 7.7 .7 billion people, predicted to go to about 11 billion by the end of this century. Hopefully, the population will stabilize, perhaps even decline. And as we have a rising population, we're also growing wealthier. And this is something people want, they expect. And the question is, as people get wealthier and their living standards increase, do we have enough resources in the world to do this? And this is a real challenge. I think we do, but it's something that uh, will need science. It will need innovation, technology. It would also need an awareness that uh, in a world of 7 or 11 billion people, uh, one does not have one car per person, one does not have one airplane per person, uh, and so on and so forth. And so what it really means is the resources we do have, we have to learn to recycle we, uh, just about everything to go to a very circular way of using things. But even there, uh, it is going to be very difficult. For the first time, I think, in the history of civilization, uh, we are, in fact, learning that human activity is really changing the destiny of our planet. That uh, the planet is not an infinite resource. Now, why should you care? Well, think about it this way. If you say, I'm only interested in myself, maybe my children, certainly, don't really care about my great-grandchildren or my great-great-grandchildren or children halfway around the world who I'll never know, you're really throw, turning your back on something where we are a connected world. We, we're, we're one people. Something that affects what happens halfway around the world will affect us. And we see this now because the world is getting to be a flatter place, a more crowded place. When countries collapse, when agriculture collapses, you get refugees. And the refugees have nowhere to go. They have nothing to eat. So they swarm across borders. And so this whole business of caring not only about your immediate family, but about what is really happening in the world and the use of the world's resources does, in fact, affect all of us because we are a whole bunch of people in a smaller planet. You can start with uh, using as little energy as you possibly can. Turn off the lights when you don't need them. If you live within walking distance, bicycling distance, think about walking or bicycling. I, myself, uh, very happy that I was able to find a home within 15 minutes bicycling distance. And even if it rains, I will ride my bike to work. If it really pours, I have um, rain trousers and things like that. Uh, so I rarely drive my car. In fact, I really shouldn't own it because I drive it a thousand miles a year. Um, small things. Uh, every light that is commonly used in our home is now an LED light. Uh, and, and we have very, very low electricity bills. Uh, we're in the bottom 5% of the people in our neighborhood. And I suspect the other 4% um, uh, don't really live in those homes. So we are eating less meat, more vegetarian meals, things of that nature. Many, many things one can do, um, uh, but it revolves around consumption as well. Now this is a fine sticking point with my wife and I. I hate to throw away clothes. I have 20 and 30 year old clothes. She thinks it's ghastly. I've got a 20 year old car. I, want, I hope it's the last car I ever own. <laughs> Uh, in my life because I simply uh, don't put any miles on it. And, 
And so, so uh, now, here's the one thing I do feel guilty about. I do fly. In fact, I fly around the world giving talks about climate change and energy. So I'm trying to sort this one out. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs>
Well, if you say it's too late, you just said, well, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything. You know, people who are born 50 years from today, that's their problem, not mine. That's not a good attitude. <laughs> so I think uh, you can never say it's too late. People are beginning to realize that um, we are one society. We're one globe. Uh, we are not so we can insulate ourselves from what is happening in the world, that we can uh, you know, go into a guarded gate community, uh, build a moat around what you want to protect, uh, that this will not work. Uh, some people still think that's possible, both you know, walls around the country or walls around rich communities. But in the end, um, there are a lot more people who are beginning to think, no, this is something that we all have to pay attention to, uh, that we do have a responsibility. You know, as they say, we are a brother's keeper. And so this feeling of responsibility to all the citizens of the world is something which we need. Uh, I don't know if people really thought that way a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, I doubt it. Uh, that this is something new. Just as what else is new is that we are changing the destiny of the earth. Thank you very much for your questions, uh, for sharing the questions. I, I had great fun uh, trying to answer them. To your concerns about sustainability in the world, this is, this is something you should be proud of, convince your parents, your friends, that this is the thing that's gonna make the world change for the better. We face incredible challenges, but keep up the hope.